guys, it's Eric, owner of Farpoint Farms here in the beautiful mountains of North Carolina. Today I'll be doing a review and demonstration of this. This is an AgriFab disc harrow. Now uh, Brindley also makes pretty much the same thing. There's slight variation, but for all purposes it's pretty much the same. So what's a disc harrow and what can you do with it? Well the main purpose of a disc harrow is to till. So you can break ground with a disc harrow, but it's going to take a lot of effort to do so. The best combination you can get for a situation like this is to get the Brindley moldboard plow, which I've done another video on, and then use something like this to break up those big chunks of sod and dirt and stuff that you've turned into smaller pieces. So uh, a disc harrow is kind of like a tiller in that sense, or a cultivator. It takes large chunks of soil, breaks it up. It chops up the roots and the grass and, and the weeds that you have in your garden from over the winter and turns it into uh, organic material that you can use to help grow the stuff you want to grow. Now, I'm going to get the camera a little closer here and we'll do a walk around, but uh, just uh, let me lower this down for a second. All right, so if you have a regular sleeve hitch on your garden tractor, you can use this with uh, cinder blocks. That's what this tray here is for. And you stack cinder blocks up to add weight. That gives the disc harrow downward force so when you're going through your garden it'll help break up uh, the large chunks of dirt and debris and stuff. Now you'll notice there's a, a prong sticking out here and that is actually so you can daisy chain these things because it really works better if you have two or three of these linked in, in series. You have one raking inward, you have one raking outward, and I'll show you what I mean here in a second. And that helps just chop it up so you're talking about less passes. However, I have uh, all day. I'm going to be doing gardening and then I'm going to mow for the first time this season. So uh, I have time. So I'm going to use this. Now there are some greasable fittings. Again, I'm going to bring the camera in a little closer and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. But overall, uh, you know, a, a gas powered pull behind tiller for this new is going to run you about fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars $1,600. This was less than $200 online. So if you're willing to take the time to, uh, you know, make multiple passes, this is where it's at. This is pretty nice. So let me grab the camera, I'll get closer in, I'll show you some of the features up close, talk to you about how you can make adjustments on this thing, and then we'll go up to the garden and do a little bit of... Okay, so here it is. Now again, you do need a sleeve hitch. I'm going to try to get out of the shade, I'll cut to the other side here. You do need a sleeve hitch to use this. Agrifab and Brindley both make them. You can also get these for ATVs, I'm not sure who manufactures them, I can't remember. But uh, it is going to require a sleeve hitch, because it does require, you know, pretty heavy duty tractor in order to do this you're going to be putting a pretty good strain on the transmission now this tray up here like I said is for stacking cinder blocks or other heavy weights materials so you can provide downward force if you don't have the electric upgrade to your sleeve hitch I have that so I don't have to worry about that and back here like I said is an opportunity for you to bolt a second disc harrow to it if you want to go with that and and that way you could have two or three I think uh, three is pretty much as much as you'd want to do. After that, you'd kind of <laughs> you'd kind of be losing instead of winning. Let me get back here and I'll crouch down and show you. Now there's two greasable points on these. I don't know if you can see it with the sunlight, but right here, there's a grease fitting, and on the other side, the same thing. You have these two grease fittings, and it's important to grease them uh, before doing a, a good cut because that's that's where all the weight's going on. So you want that. There's no bearings, no ball bearings, it's just grease and mandrels, so something to think about. Now you'll notice the rake of these, I've got these set pretty far back, and I, by rake I mean if this is flat and that's an angle, you want that at an angle just so it kind of chews into the dirt. If you go just straight over it, yeah, it'll break it up, but I found having a, a pretty steep rake, especially with a garden tractor, helps a lot. And, uh, and up here on the top, you make those adjustments. As you can see, there's slots here and bolts going through there. So you can move these in and out. And uh, what's neat about this, you see how there's two bolts here, but there's a slot here for a third. If you were growing something real short, and I'm not sure what, maybe radishes or something like that, lettuce perhaps, um, or certain types of lettuce, you could take these, unbolt them, and move these whole things outward, leaving a pretty good sized gap in between here. And that way you could actually kind of how do I describe this? You could you could cut down the weeds and cultivate without destroying your row that you have in the center. You'd have to drive right over it. 
Now on a real tractor, that would be much more useful. But on this, you know, you're talking about the, the height of a garden tractor. You'd have to be pretty careful because you could definitely damage plants fairly easily. You know, I don't think the ground clearance on this is more than eight or nine inches. So you'd have to be careful with that. I do sometimes use this in an unorthodox way as a hiller. Like I make my rows with this by making multiple passes in the same spot. It does tend with the rake that I have and with the discs facing in like that to push dirt towards the center. So if you make four or five passes, you can actually make a row for yourself without having to get out a rake and a hoe and, and do it manually. So that's kind of nice. So that pretty much describes its form and function. Let's go on up to the garden and we'll uh, make a few passes and you can see how it works. All right, I don't know how well you can see this here, but uh, if you take a close look, spring has not even sprung all the way up at the top of the mountains here in the middle of May. Those trees are still barren, but about halfway down, about 100 feet above my elevation, maybe 200 feet, uh, spring is, is finally taking hold. Anyway, here we are. I've already done some work with the tiller here a couple weeks ago, so it's, it's fairly soft. But I'm going to run through here with this to give you an idea of uh, what to expect. So I'm going to move the camera a little bit and we'll get started. I don't know if you can see how well this is working here um, because of the lighting issues. I'm trying to get this done before this is in direct sunlight, so it is what it is. But in the areas that are flat, it has turned that into a nice fine sand. And if you can see here, and this might be a little hard to catch on the camera, because I've raked those discs in so hard, I've actually got myself a nice little hill that I've grown here. And it's about, oh, I don't know, about six inches high, maybe seven inches high at most. And I can just take a garden rake now and, and really lessen the amount of time I spend out here with manual labor by letting the tool do my work. So I'm making my rows with enough space between them so I can get this in in the middle of the summer to chop up weeds in between. And again, that's less work for me because I can just go through and hand pick the weeds on the actual rows where the plants are growing and not have to worry about picking weeds all the way up and down the garden. Because as you can see, this is a, a I think it's a, this year we cut it down a little bit. I think it's about 75 feet by 50, and we have another 20 feet that way that we're, we're not using this year. Just decided we didn't need as many potatoes this year as we did last year. So that's it. I am Eric, owner of Farpoint Farms. Hope you enjoyed this video on the Brinley Disc Harrow. Again, Agrifab, Brinley, Craftsman, Husqvarna, Lowe's, Home Depot, lots of places sell this. You can find it uh, usually for less than $200. $150 to $200 is the range that you can expect to get this. Now, maybe you come across one used, $50 to $75. Is it useful? Totally. Is it more useful with an electronic sleeve hitch upgrade? Definitely. But can it be done without it? Sure. Just get yourself a couple cinder blocks or a few bags of gravel to lay on the back of it to give you some downward force. I'll see you next time. Take care. Something that needs a little fixing on far point farms. Freedom is mighty sweet.